I'm Johannes from Fly.io and today I want to show you how to use AI in your Laravel app. For that, we'll be using Olama to self-host a large language model that can both read invoices and extract the necessary data from them. Along the way, you'll see me cheating. See, I pulled a sneaky on you. Following framework conventions, as you should, and going the extra mile. Mwah. Let's go. Before we dive into the code, let me show you how the app looks like. If we upload an invoice, we can create the invoice, but it doesn't really know who the customer or the total amount was. Or can it? In the background, there's a job running with AI, and it's reading the invoice right now to see what the customer and the total amount is. There we go, and it has found that the customer is Brad Gessler, and the total amount is 71.49. So let me see if it's correct. Here we go, Brad Gessler, 71.49. So hooray, our AI model is working perfectly. So let me show you how I built it. Let's start off with deploying the AI model. So this is my Laravel uh, project directory, and in here, I wanna add a directory for my Olama application to live. So I'll create a directory, Olama, there we go. And in there, I will run fly launch to create a new application on fly.io for, um, for the Olama application. So in here, I wanna use the image Olama that will pull it from Docker Hub if it can find it, which it will. Um, the region Amsterdam, that's closest to me. The organization, the same as the Laravel application, which is invoice upload. I wanna give it a name of invoice upload Olama. I wanna stop it from deploying right away if I launch it. So I'll add no deploy and I'll add flycast as well, which is for the networking. More on that in a bit. Let's run this first. Here we go. So it has found the Olama Olama image and we're about to launch the app. Everything looks good. So I do not want to tweak the settings. So I'll enter N and there we go. Our app is ready. So it has created the configuration. It has created the app, but it hasn't deployed it yet, which is important because I need to make some changes. Let's go do that now. All right. So this is the fly.toml file that has been generated by flyctl for us. Uh, a couple of changes need to be made. So the internal port is by default 8080, but the Olama image will expose its API on port 11434. So let's put that there. And the Olama image will only accept HTTP requests. So let's set force HTTPS to false. There you go. And let's set auto stop machines to true. So it automatically stops after a couple of minutes. That'll help save on the bills. For the VM, let's uh, remove this so we can add size here. And here we can say what GPU we want. And we'll go for a big boy, the A180 gigabytes. There we go. And now we just need a place to put our model. So let's add a mount. The source is models, for example. That's just the name we give our storage. The destination is where it will be mounted inside of the application. So that'll be root slash dot Olama. There you go. And then the initial size will be, let's say, 100 gigabytes. That'll be fine to add a model in there. So that all looks good. So let's try deploying it. So in our terminal, we can run fly deploy to deploy the application. So there we go, our app is deployed. So now let's try and see if Olama is running correctly. So for that, I'll SSH into the application by running fly SSH console. And now we can run Olama run and then the name of a model. In our case, we'll use Llama 3.1 8B. There we go. So Olama has now pulled the model and has started it up. So we can send it a message. So what is the purpose of a cat's whiskers? So we know Olama is working and it has pulled a model. So let's show the list of models. So that's Olama 
ls. So we have the name llama 3.18b. That's what we need to remember for in our Laravel app, which we will connect up right now. Okay, so we are back in Laravel and this is the invoice model class. So what I want to happen is once an invoice is created, I want the AI model to get into action and get the data out of the invoice. So for that, I'll create an event, uh, create events. There you go, invoice created, for example. And let's create a listener for the event. That'll be determine invoice data. If I can type it correctly, there we go. And it will listen to invoice created. There we go. All right, let's import that class. And Laravel will automatically um, find and register the event and the listener. So now all we have to do is go back to the invoice model class and let's say protected dispatches events uh, created will dispatch the invoice created event. There we go. So let's see if we can get it to dump something. So like one, two, three, four. Let's create the invoice and that dumps one, two, three, four. So that is working correctly. Now let's collect our Olama application to our Laravel application. But before we do that, I have a small confession to make. The AI model is not going to read the text in the image. For that, I'll use Tesseract to get the characters out of the image and I'll get the text that Tesseract outputs and put that into the AI model. That'll be a lot more stable. So let's add Tesseract into our Docker file. Let's add run apt get update and apt get install y tesseract ocr there we go now we can run fly deploy to get the changes deployed so let's run fly deploy there we go all right our app has been updated so now we can start thinking about how to connect the laravel app to the Olama application. So for that, we'll be following framework conventions as you should. So uh, let's go to, let's clear this out first. Let's go to the config um, directory. This houses all the config files for mail, for logging, for sessions, for uh, cache, for auth. Um, so we can add our Olama uh, configuration in here. So I'll create an olama.php file and we'll add our Olama configuration in there. All right, so this is what we need for our Olama configuration. So the API URL will be HTTP, not HTTPS, uh, invoice upload uh, Olama, that's the app name, dot flycast. Flycast is a way to enable the fly proxy, which will enable auto starting and auto stopping. For, for apps in the same organization. I'll link a video down below with more information about Fly Networking. So then we have API Generate, there we go. The model we wanna use is Llama 3.18b. Format is JSON, so the output format will be JSON. And the system prompt will be this whole thing. So basically just get total amount and customer out of the Tesseract output that we will provide. There we go. So now we can go into our listener again and access the Olama API. All right, so in our listener, we can get the invoice, get the file path of the invoice file, and then we can use Tesseract to get out all the text of the image. Next, we can connect it up to our Olama application. To do that, we'll send in post request to our Olama application. So here we go. And this is where that Olama configuration file comes in very handy to gather up all the properties here. Um, so then we just add the prompt. This will be added to the system prompt. And that's just the output of the Tesseract command. We also set stream to false. So the API returns a single object instead of a stream of objects. 
Then we can decode our JSON response. So we get this as an object and then we can update the total amount and the customer. Remember, always set monetary values as an integer in your database. So that's why I'm multiplying it by 100 right here. So this becomes an integer. And then just save the invoice. And if that's done, we can deploy our changes and see it in action. All right, so here we are back in our application. So let's see if we set it up correctly. I'll create a new invoice add the invoice PNG. There we go. And once I click create, our listener will pick it up. It will be queued. So the queue will uh, accept the job. It'll be executed. And after a while, I can see the total amount has updated already. So after a while, there we go. Our AI has come back with the correct information, Brad Gessler and 7194. So that looks perfect. There's just one thing left to do to make this application really mwah. This listener will take a while to finish. It'll take a couple of seconds. So we should put it on the queue. We can do that by adding implements should queue in our listener class. And now it will be put on the default queue. That's all I have for you today. Bye bye and see you in the next one. Bye.